Hey friends, Patrick here. I just wanted to make a quick video that I saw um, today about what I saw today. The president of El Salvador, Bukele, is going and putting the gangsters and the criminals in prison. And then he's using prisoners to go and actually tear down all the tombstones that they had put up to honor these gang members. These gang members would pass away, they'd shoot and kill each other, or they'd get killed somehow. And they would create tombstones for them with the gang symbols on them to kind of honor them, right? And he's getting prisoners to go in and just obliterate all this. Now, I don't know how they're going to replace it. They'll probably have to put some kind of little plaque with the guy's name on it to maintain some dignity and respect. I'm hoping they do that. But it shows how committed this individual is to defeating wickedness. Because if these, these people were a law unto themselves. They said, we're just going to go out and rob and kill and do whatever we want to do. We're, not, we're, we're going to despise authority and we're going to just do it based on our culture, based on our rules of live by the sword, die by the sword kind of uncivilized um, anarchy, really. And he is getting rid of that out of his entire country. You know, thousands and thousands of people he's incarcerating so that they're unable to terrorize the peaceful citizens of that country. And it's an amazing thing to see because it shows the transformative activity that is happening in that country. The country called El Salvador, the, the, the name of that country means the Savior, named after the Savior, right? Named after Jesus, the Christ. And so what a powerful statement that he's making. And he posted that today to his social media so that he showed images of the prisoners going out and smashing down the gang symbol tombstones, um, you know, by by hammers and sledgehammers and, and so on and so forth. So just a real powerful statement. And so to see that is somehow inspiring because it shows an individual's commitment to totally go against corruption, to totally go against evil, to, to totally go against wickedness, and the, the difference that one person can make as the leader of a country. I happen to live in a country where the leader of the country has not been committed to righteousness. He's been committed to um, allowing himself to be influenced for financial gain in many different situations. And so when you have that as a leader, the leader is not committed to righteousness. They're, they're committed to their own self-interest and to the interest of those by whom they are influenced. So the leader that is currently the leader of the country uh, uh, that I live in, Canada, does not have integrity. He does not have a commitment to righteousness. And as you can see a huge difference because the uh, public spending is uh, totally uh, irresponsible, out of control. A lot of the public spending is good, absolutely, because we need roads and hospitals and all kinds of infrastructure to be paid from the, the tax revenues. And of course, we don't want to bankrupt the country so that the currency loses its value and, and we end up with runaway hyperinflation that we've seen in many other countries in the world. We hope that doesn't happen in Canada. But just to... to to see a leader of a country committed to righteousness at that level is like a biblical level of, of you know, battling against the forces of evil is really, really remarkable. I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that ever before in my lifetime. And so I just asked if you're seeing this video that you would pray for the leader of our country, Canada, if you're a Canadian, or wherever you are in your own country, if you have leaders that are committed to righteousness at that level so that they will get rid of the evil influence, those influences that just want to take and steal and traffic in drugs, traffic in all kinds of wickedness that you, you, we don't need to go into all the details of, of, of what they traffic in, 
you know, all types of illegal activities that they are involved in. If you have a leader in your own country that is committed to combating that, I just ask that you would pray for them. Give them strength, Father God. We ask that you would raise up individuals that are committed to righteousness. Because when evil gets defeated, what ends up happening? The people are able to prosper in peace. The people are able to go out and be fruitful and multiply. They're able to be productive. They're able to love one another, serve one another, and have a healthy community that builds and grows and allows for children to play safely in the street and so on and so forth. All the great benefits of having a peaceful society. Even the scripture says how good and pleasant it is for children of God to dwell together in unity, right? It's, it's an amazing thing to have a peaceful society. And of course, there's areas of the world where there's strife and war and all that kind of stuff that's going on. As David said, that's beyond what what we can imagine, the, the forces that are fighting behind that. But it boils down to selfishness and evil at a, at a, at a again, a biblical scale. When you, when you have countries going to war with one another, that's insanity. That's, that's total death, anarchy. It's, it's, it's not what God intended. God wanted us to be fruitful and multiply. He wanted us to, to live in peaceful harmony, to have dignity, to serve him and to honor him all our days so that we can be happy and blessed. And this can only happen when people will stand up for righteousness and say, no, I'm not going to accept that bribe. I'm not going to to allow myself to be influenced by evil. And sometimes it's a very, it's it's a subtle thing, right? Somebody comes along and says, oh, I just want to give you this, this bribe so that you'll give this contract to my friend or to my company. And it starts like it seems innocent. Say, oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter because, you know, he's, he's, no, that's where evil starts. It starts on a small scale and then it balloons out of control until they have no integrity left. Look at the, 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 the leader of Canada. He has absolutely no integrity. He's every word that he speaks is, is, is false. He, he's not able to speak the truth even if he wanted to because he's so far deep into the clutches of hypocrisy and lies that they control him. No integrity left. It's gone. It'll never come back. He will spend the rest of his life in regret unless he would have a radical transformation. A miraculous transformation from God is the only way. But for now, he is completely lost and he has abandoned the leadership of his country to the corporatocracy, to the kleptocracy, to whoever has the most influence and the most money to give to him to put into his lap so that they will get what they want. And sometimes those things will take one direction, sometimes they'll go another direction, but it's easy to see that he is a man that has been completely overrun and influenced and has no backbone to stand up against anything that may be harmful to the Canadian citizenry. Oh, he'll spout, you know, a lot of platitudes and he'll say they're going to do this and they're going to do that. But at the heart of it, at the heart of what's going on is that he is a man of zero integrity. And that is unfortunate. So we have to pray for the leader of Canada and say, oh God, please allow us to have a leader like the president of El Salvador who is firmly committed to rooting out unrighteousness to rooting out wickedness and removing it. Maybe there's a place for them where they can be productive in prison. Maybe they can be rehabilitated where they can become productive citizens again somehow. Hopefully they can because they are souls whom God loves as well, right? They they had a life that was committed to the gang life and now that life has been taken away from them. So hopefully they can be rehabilitated into something productive, taking care of gardens and taking care of parks and forests and earning a, a, an honest pay so that they can live happy lives because this is a radical transformation to them as well. So we have to also pray for the prisoners that are going through this radical transformation and not hate on them and not try and get revenge on them, but instead try and encourage them towards rehabilitation, just like we need in our country. There's a lot of people in our country that are committed to a lifestyle of kleptocracy. They're committed to a lifestyle of thievery. 
to different levels. Some it's involved in trafficking, some it's involved in, in white collar crime, but it's the same thing. It's, a, it's, it's crime of a different flavor. And we have to pray for those people that say, no, there is a better way. There is a way to earn an honest living. They say, oh, you're naive, that's impossible. No, we, we have to keep ripping off the, the Canadian taxpayer. We have to keep ripping off the public with this. Otherwise, we won't get our bonus. Well, if that's what you're committed to, you're going to have your gravestone destroyed in the same way. And by that, I, I say that as a metaphor, because the memory of the wicked will perish. We're told that. And uh, the Word of God doesn't lie, right? It's, oh, you're talking religious talk again. No, 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 no. Look what's happening in El Salvador. The memory of those wicked people is being wiped from the face of the earth. Take a look at the video that I'm going to link to here. And that will be the heritage of anyone that remains committed to wickedness, anyone that co remains committed to falsehood, anyone that remains committed to just, oh, just fudging the numbers a little bit. No. Righteousness has to be front and center, and that can only come by putting God first because He will allow His Spirit to lead us into righteousness. We can't do it of our own sinful nature because our own sinful nature is no different than the prisoners. We just want to get something for nothing. We just want to take and steal due to our own lusts. That's human nature. But we, when we ask God to replace that nature with His righteous Holy Spirit, then we can be transformed. Then we can create a better world for ourselves and for our community and our loved ones. That is the solution. You put God first, you ask Him for His mercy, and He will allow you to be transformed into a person of righteousness. So pray for our leaders. Whatever country you're in, please pray for your leaders and so that we can have a commitment to, the, to righteousness on the level that we see in El Salvador. It's just mind-blowing. I mean, I saw this video and I was like, I... I I couldn't believe it, right? It was just, it was shocking. You know, I was like, wow, this guy is on a whole other level. Whether that's able to get replicated or not, I mean, do we even have the faith to even think that would be? It's, it's so out of this world. Like, where did this guy come from? You know what I mean? So I'm going to link to that video. Please take a look at it and, and, and allow it to dwell in your heart and mind and say, is the leader of my country that committed against evil and wickedness? Or is he just towing the line and talking like a politician talks and blah, 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 going through the motions so he can get his big fat pensions and bonuses and bribes that are given to them for their tax-free foundations and on and on and on. All the abuses, their memory is going to be wiped out. And, and we have to pray that they will turn themselves around. So thank you for watching. God bless you. I pray that you're doing well wherever you are. And let's thank God that we are not living in a, a place where there's war, where there's insanity, and, and where people are killing each other. Thank God that we have a, a place that is peaceful. And for that, I am still very, very thankful that I happen to be in Canada, which is still a peaceful place that's, that's held on to a, um, a peaceful civilization, even though it's under threat by rampant indiscretions by our leadership, by who are threatening to destroy the infrastructure of the country by their misplaced ideology and their misplaced uh, efforts. And uh, let's ask that God would, would keep us on a, on a straighter path for our leadership and for ourselves. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I love you. I hope you're having a good day. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Take care now. Bye-bye.